This land uh, was, was formerly under uh, non-Indian ownership and control, is within the boundaries of our native nation. The Rosewood Sioux tribe purchased this land and then put it into trust and brought it back into their territory under their control. Um, and previously, you know, in past years, it's, it's been a, a working and operational cattle ranch. We are now in the process of converting it to what will be the largest Native American owned and managed buffalo range uh, in the world. My name is Wizipra, Little Elk, W-I-Z-I-P-A-N, Little Elk, L-I-T-T-L-E-E-L-K, and I am the CEO for Redco, Rosebud Economic Development Corporation. Our project is called Wolakota, and what that means in our language is to live the Lakota way of life. The Wolakota project is a regenerative buffalo range um, that is operated essentially as, as a ranch. And what that means is that uh, in order to do our work, we have to be economically sustainable. And so our model is uh, after five years, after we're fully stocked, is that we will wholesale around 300 buffalo a year. Uh, the sale of those uh, buffalo will provide uh, working capital, uh, pay back the loans that we've you know, borrowed in order to you know, kick off the project and pay the, the lease on this land that we have to, to pay on an annual basis. Uh, it provides some jobs for some folks. And I think that it also unlocks other potential opportunities for people. And, and so, you know, again, this idea that our identity is linked from the health and welfare and well-being of Buffalo. And when they're strong, we're gonna be strong again as well. So uh, we are uh, on what has been called Mustang Meadows Ranch, which is a 28,000 acre working ranch. Uh, our project will create a 28,000 acre regenerative buffalo range that will be home to 1,500 buffalo. Uh, this land uh, was, was formerly under uh, non-Indian ownership and control, is within the boundaries of our native nation. The Rosebud Sioux tribe purchased this land and then put it into trust and brought it back into their territory under their control. Um, and previously, you know, in past years, it's, it's been a, a working and operational cattle ranch. We are now in the process of converting it to what will be the largest Native American owned and managed buffalo range uh, in the world. And uh, will represent uh, seven percent of all Native American owned uh, and managed buffalo. The Wulakota project is a regenerative buffalo range um, that is operated essentially as, as a ranch. And what that means is that uh, in order to do our work, we have to be economically sustainable. And so our model is uh, after five years, after we're fully stocked, is that we will wholesale around 300 buffalo a year. Uh, the sale of those uh, buffalo will provide uh, working capital, 
uh, pay back the loans that we've you know borrowed in order to you know kick off the project and pay the the lease on this land that we have to to pay on an annual basis uh, it provides some jobs for some folks and i think that it also unlocks other potential opportunities for people um, this is only one of many other projects that we're developing and implementing we need this to provide for the people to buy food <coughs> Bachelor, what's over all of us as we travel this, this, this red road to do these things, Bachelor? Oh, the doctor asked him. share that with our own chief other or our young ones and with their relatives because that tells you more about who we are where we come from there was a great connection that we had with the, with the, the buffalo nation they were the ones who taught us how to be and how to live our buffalo are going to be coming from a variety of sources and in particular we're really excited about our partnership with the u.s department of interior uh, which has what they call a 10-year national bison management plan, which uh, is the, the plan and framework for how they manage all of their buffalo across all of their federal lands, National Park Service and Fish and Wildlife animals. This is the first time that a non-federal entity is a part of that national bison management plan, which means that we'll be able to receive and also exchange buffalo with all the fish and wildlife herds with all of the national park herds. The beginning and the start of this herd is coming from the Badlands National Park in South Dakota and the Theodore Roosevelt Park in North Dakota. I was literally only three years old. I'm 41 years old now. And literally have helped start and make sure that we had buffalo on roads that because at your guys' age, it was instilled in me that that was something that we had to keep going. We had to keep buffalo here so we can exist. So we would be continue to be healthy. And if something ever happened, we had our relatives to take care of us as we always have lived in the past. Um, through that time, there's been three. Uh, this is basically the third buffalo project that has started. We have Game Fish and Parks. We have Sinti Galeshko University. My dad started that in 99. Um, and then now we have the Wolokota project. 2020. It's beautiful. I think one of the things that's important to understand about our herd and the way that we're approaching our work is that we're doing it from a culturally appropriate manner. Uh, within the bison industry there are kind of two approaches. One is to simply treat buffalo like cattle, to put them in feedlots and to you know run them through you know kind of meat processing plants. Um, that does not respect the animal, that does not uh, honor bison and who they are. We are going to be raising our bison uh, in a humane way and a culturally appropriate way that is guided by prayer and Lakota thought and philosophy. Uh, what that means is that we're going to, uh, when we harvest buffalo, that it'll be in the field and that it'll be guided by prayer. Um, what that means is that we're going to put herd health uh, above profit. Um, and it's a little bit harder to do it that way, but that is going to, to be our, our approach and how we're going to do that work. Perseverance. Perseverance is what we always have to do to keep moving forward. The buffalo moving here was never an easy thing. It seems like in Indian country, nothing's ever easy. You gotta fight tooth and nail for everything you've got. We just became a TLE. The executive officer for TLE recently, and I was here as a BIE superintendent, and I worked closely with TLE as a leader. Um, you know, I thought this was a very important project to work with Luigi and Redco on to bring this buffalo back, because throughout the reservations that I've been on, worked on, it's been many, 
You know, people, uh, the tribes have buffalo, but they don't do anything with them. You know, they brought them in one time, I guess, for tourism, for people to look at. Uh, after that, they, it seems that, you know, that I'm managing it. But, you know, with this project, uh, what I know of it, you know, it's, it's meant to, to help the people. The relationship between Lakota and Buffalo is one that is inextricable. Uh, Buffalo cannot be separated from Lakota and Lakota cannot be separated from Buffalo. We're one in the same people. Um, at one time, uh, we were on earth and we don't know exactly what form we were in, but there was a great cleansing and uh, people were disobeying the original instructions from our Creator. And uh, so there was a cleansing and some of us were taken into the ground and protected. And we were underground for a time and then later uh, we emerged. And when some of us emerged we were human form and when some of us emerged we were in buffalo form. And so we're, we're the one and same people. We consider them to be our ancestors. We consider them to be the same as, as another human being. And we have a role and they have a role and they're teachers to us. So in order for us to, to be strong and healthy Lakota, the buffalo need to be strong and healthy as well. <clears throat> Introduce, her name is Monica Turkelson. Citizen of the Ogallala Sioux Tribe, joined WWF February 2017. She led our outreach and, then, and uh, worked with the tribes of liaison here to get our buffalo back in the Rosewood and then also worked on a lot of projects with Badlands National Park in the South Unit. Monica, you want to say something? Yeah, I spiked my knee last and I had a little The thought of bringing 1,500 head of bison out here and really determining, setting a path for the Sichangu Lakota, but also for other tribes, because in that vision, there's just this model thing I always talk about, and that's the lead. Partnership. TLE was in that, that first meeting and talking about that vision. And I know that this is one of the very rare projects that has a 15-year lead. So not only do you have a vision, you have a time behind that to really to produce and complete some things and to continue that vision and pass it on. So, you know, vision and partnerships really have escalated this and a lot of energy. Well, on behalf of the Department of Interior and the National Park Service, we want to congratulate you uh, on the success of realizing the Wallacota Bison Range. And we want to thank you for asking us to participate in this great event and for the release uh, that's going to happen later today. The Secretary wishes that he could, uh, he could be here, but he's got other commitments. And so um, on his behalf, I, uh, I say, uh, Thank you for the opportunity to be here and to, uh, to address you. So the buffalo were everything to us. They were our food, they provided our clothing, our shelter, our ceremonial items. They were our teachers on how to organize ourselves and our society, on how to treat one another with kindness and compassion, on how to protect children, on how to honor our elders. And when the buffalo were taken from us, it was a massive blow. The genocide was committed against the Lakota and against other indigenous peoples. There was also a genocide committed against buffalo and a very specific and concerted effort to wipe out buffalo from the land. And, you know, with colonial expansion, they, were, they knew what they were doing. And they knew that if they were able to eliminate buffalo from the land, that it would then be easier to take our land and to move us onto the reservations. And this is an opportunity to not dwell on the past, but to acknowledge it and move forward 
with new vision and with new light into a future that is healthy for our people, for our region, and for the planet. And that means healthy relationships with our family members, with our community, uh, between nations, and also between human nation and plant nations and animal nations. And uh, as a part of that, to do anything good requires uh, healthy relationships and partnerships. And so we're incredibly thankful for our, you know, all of our partners. Uh, in particular, I think that um, our partnership with the World Wildlife Fund has been monumental and pivotal from a technical assistance standpoint and we're just incredibly thankful for, for what they've been able to, to help us with. 